Today we will be showing you how to replace a Quantum Superloader 3 tape library. This replacement will require downtime and should be scheduled with the system administrator. Since this is a full library replacement with the drive already installed in the tape library, this will cover all versions of the Superloader 3, regardless of what style drive is inside. It will also cover SAS, SCSI, and fiber channel interface types. There are a few reasons that you may decide you need a replacement Superloader 3. The library may be completely dead, or you may have repeated drive errors with multiple different cartridges, or you may have an issue where the picker assembly isn't pulling or putting tapes correctly from the magazines or drive. If any of these issues is occurring, you will need to replace the library. It should be noted that this video will not be covering the disassembly and replacement of just the tape drive inside the Superloader 3. This is a depot level repair only. If you purchased a replacement Superloader 3 from the Rocket Platform website, it will already come fully assembled with the tape drive inside it. All you will need to move over from the faulty unit is your tape cartridges. The first thing you will need to do prior to performing the library replacement is to remove all of the tape cartridges from the library. If the library is still able to be powered on, you will first want to check if there is a tape in the drive. If there is, please use the front panel commands to move the tape from the drive to either a magazine slot or the mail slot. If the library is either completely dead or the front panel commands fail when trying to move the tape from the drive, please open a ticket through the Rocket Plus customer portal. Once the drive is empty, you will now need to remove the magazines and remove all tapes from them. This library comes in both single and dual magazine configurations. We will be showing you how to remove the left side magazine. If this is a dual magazine configured machine, you will be able to use the same procedure for the right side magazine as well. If the library is able to be powered on, use the front panel to perform an eject command of the left side magazine. If the command is successful, the left magazine will pop out slightly and you will be able to pull it all the way out. If the command is not successful, or if the library cannot be powered on, you will need to manually unlock the magazine. This process is done by using a small magazine release tool. You may have one of these tools from when you originally purchased your library from the OEM. If you do not have one of these tools, you will need a small thin piece of plastic roughly the size of a credit card to perform this procedure. Please note, we highly advise against using an actual credit card for this procedure. Once you have your magazine release tool or equivalent piece of plastic ready, you will need to slide the tool between the magazine and the operator panel. When you push it in far enough, it will trip the lock for the magazine, releasing it, and you can remove the magazine from the library. There are some cases where the robotics assembly of the library is in such a position where getting the magazine release tool between the magazine and operator panel is not possible. If this is the case with your library, please open a ticket through the Rocket Plus customer portal and we will be happy to assist you. Now that you have your magazine out of the library, please remove all tapes from it. You will need to use the white gear on the side of the magazine to rotate the slots of the magazine and ensure that all of the tapes are out before reinserting it into the library. If you have a dual magazine configured machine, please perform this same procedure for the second magazine and remove all tapes from it as well before continuing with this video. Once all tapes are removed from the library, you will need to retrieve your unique settings from the library before powering it down. This will include, but is not limited to, the network settings and the SCSI ID if the library is SCSI connected. If your library is completely dead, you will need to set up the replacement library from scratch. This may require contacting the system administrator to get the appropriate network settings for the library and also the SCSI ID if the library had been SCSI connected. When all relevant settings are obtained, you will need to push and hold the power button for a few seconds until the power down procedure begins on the front panel. Once you see the power down procedure start, you may release the power button and wait until the library has powered itself off. Now you will need to go around to the rear of the library and first flip the power switch to the off position. Then unplug the power, ethernet, and interface cables from the rear of the library. If this is a SCSI library, there will also be a SCSI terminator that needs to be removed before returning to the front of the library. Your library may have rack mount ears installed that secure the library into the rack. If this is the case, you will need to undo the screws that hold the rack mount ears to the rack in order to prepare the library for removal. Once you are ready, your library can now be pulled straight back and out of the rack and set to the side. You can then take your replacement library and slide it into the rack and secure the rack mount ears if they are present. 
go around to the rear of the library and first make sure that the power switch is in the off position. Then install the Ethernet, interface, and power cables into the rear of the library. Also, install the SCSI Terminator if this is a SCSI connected library. Now you can flip the power switch to the on position and return to the front of the library. In some cases, flipping the power switch in the rear of the library to the on position will have triggered the library to power up and initialize. However, if your library is still powered off, you will need to hit the power button on the front of the library once to power the library on. Please wait for the library to initialize completely. When the front operator panel shows the word idle underneath the library name, the library is now fully initialized. You will now need to go through the front panel and set your unique information, including the network settings and the SCSI ID if this is a SCSI connected library. Once these settings are confirmed, you will need to reboot the library for these settings to take effect. You are now ready to load your tapes into the magazines of the library. Please use the eject command through the operator panel to eject the left side magazine and insert all tapes into the magazine slots before inserting the magazine back into the library. Then the library will inventory the magazine. If this is a dual magazine library, you can do the same thing with the right side. Once all tapes are inserted and the library goes back to idle, the replacement is now complete. You will now need to reconfigure your backup software to be able to use the replacement library. All backup software handles this process differently. For our purposes, since we use Semantic Backup Exec, we simply need to restart the services and allow the tape services to detect the replaced chassis. Your backup software procedure may be different. Any questions about backup software should be directed to your software support or manufacturer. If you have any issues with the library replacement or the library is not powering up properly, please open a ticket through the Rocket Plus customer portal. Thanks for watching. This has been another video by the Top 10 USA video production team. We look forward to sharing more content with you going forward, so please check out our YouTube channel and please subscribe so that you get notified whenever we release a new piece of content.